Hey, welcome to Introductory uh, Anatomy and Physiology or Anatomy and Physiology 1 at Austin Community College. My name is Matthew Belzer. I'm going to be your instructor this semester. And what this video is intended to do is this is an orientation video to kind of walk you through um, the way that the class is going to be structured so you can get off to a strong start. So if you sign into Blackboard, and you'll probably get this as an email first because I always send out uh, an email at the very beginning of the semester with this video included, it's going to direct you to the Blackboard uh, web page. If you're on the Blackboard web page, you're going to find this under the orientation quiz because this is the video associated with the orientation quiz. So you're going to see this video in two locations. Now. What I want to do in this video is orient you to the class. So when you sign into Blackboard and navigate to this course, it's our Learning Management System, or LMS as Blackboard, you'll see a page that looks like this. You're always going to be directed to the home page, which is the announcements page. The announcements page is where I communicate with you. So whenever I write an announcement out, I have the option to email everybody in my class at their ACC email. So you'll receive the announcements as an email. If you feel like you missed something, you can always log in, go to the announcements page. This is where I'm going to communicate with you about grades. This is where I'm going to communicate with you about changes in the schedule, etc. So the announcements page is important. Again, every announcement will be sent to you as an email. Always be checking your ACC email, especially since you're taking this class online. If you go down to the next tool, you have the Tools tab, right? So here's our next tab, and you have Tools. And there are a lot of different tools, but the two I want to highlight for the sake of this discussion is the Blackboard Collaborate Ultra. So every week, on Thursday from 4 to 5.55 p.m. So Thursdays from 4 to 5.55 p.m. we're going to be doing a study session to wrap up the material from that week. The way that you're going to log into this study session is you're going to go to Blackboard Tools, Blackboard Collaborate, and it's going to open up a page and then there are going to be different rooms you can enter. The room for that day or that study session will be labeled by the date. So for example, it's the 30th of July today. The room would be titled 730. You click on that. I'll be logged in five minutes before the study session actually begins. So the study session begins at 4. I'm going to be logged in at 3.55 p.m. The other tool I want you to be familiar with is the My Grades tool because the My Grades tool allows you to track your progress in the class and to keep on top of the material. Now always pay attention to the announcements I send out after lecture exams because I'm going to, the point totals may vary between my point totals and the other ones because I give a little bit of extra credit. So don't worry too much about anything except my announcements. Course evaluation, that's not going to become important until the end of the semester when you have to do your instructor evaluations. Syllabus and schedule, this is a really important tab. Here are your content folders, and within those content folders, you have the syllabus in both Word and PDF format and the schedule in both Word and PDF format. So the syllabus is already open here. What I'm going to do next is open the most important document in the class, which is the schedule. Then I'll start going over the syllabus and the schedule. But the most important document, just from a day-to-day -day perspective, is the schedule. So I just kind of want to highlight that. Now, if we go to the um, schedule, oh, is that two? Did I open up two schedules? No, it looks like it. Here's syllabus. Okay, so let's go ahead and open up the syllabus. So if you look through the syllabus, at the very top it has all my information, the office hours, the section and the synonym of the class. The best way to communicate with me is at my ACC email. The phone isn't linked to my phone yet, so that's just my office phone. I get back to emails very quickly. Always email me from your ACC email. Never ask me to download a document that you've attached. So always email me from your ACC email. Never ask me to download a document you've attached. Now, if you look at the course structure, I include the course structure at the very beginning because I think it's one of the most important things to recognize about the class. So you'll see lectures. Lectures will be in online form. 
will be in the online form of YouTube and Camtasia Screencast videos. Although the course is completely online, I've provided a recommended schedule using Monday and Thursday as a framework for completion times. So when you look at the schedule, Monday and Thursday is just arbitrary days that I've chosen to kind of give you an idea of where you should be pacing with the class. And it's also giving you an idea about what material is going to be due at the end of the week. And we'll look at the schedule in just a little bit. So you're going to have lectures in the form of YouTube lectures, online labs, many of them just videos, and then study sessions every Thursday from 4 to 5.55 p.m. Now as we go through this, I'm going to highlight exactly what the lectures in the labs entail. In fact, I'll do that right now. So I'm going to get rid of that just so there isn't a bunch of extraneous tabs open. So we know that there's going to be lectures and labs. We know that they're going to be online. Now, office hours and tutoring, I think, is self-explanatory. Important links. We'll talk about this in just a minute, but the required book for the class, you don't actually have to purchase a textbook for this class. The textbook can be downloaded online. It's what's called the OpenStax textbook. And if you go to that link, It'll take you to the website for OpenStax. It's what's called an open educational resource. If you go to the table of contents, you can get everything you need um, with respect to the chapters that you're reading. So you can look, uh, for example, the first exam is over chapters one through four. My lectures are really the focal point, but if you're the type of person who enjoys reading, right, or learns better reading, and I happen to be that type of person, you can definitely read the chapters. In fact, I highly encourage you to read the chapters. So you don't have to pay for a textbook, but this is the textbook that I'm going to use. I'm going to use the OpenStax textbook uh, for the course. So you have the OpenStax textbook. So you have the link to that under important links, and when we get into required material, I'll reiterate that. And then you have the orientation quiz. The orientation quiz is already up and ready to go. You'll see the video posted here when you uh, watch this. I'm actually making this video right now, so I can't post it there at the moment because I haven't made it yet. Then when you go to Unit 1 material, you're going to see Unit 1 lecture material and Unit 1 lab material. And I essentially said this course is going to consist of a series of lectures and labs. Most of them are going to be in video format. So what does that actually mean? And let's explore what that means. So when you go to Unit 1 Lecture, if you go to Chapter 1 Lecture Block, you go Video 1, Introduction to Anatomy and Physiology. This is a YouTube video that I made. You have your lecture handout. Every single lecture is going to be associated with a lecture handout. And let me tell you this right now. If you aren't watching the lectures and doing the lecture handouts, you're not going to do well in the course. You have to keep on top of the material in the class, and it's a lot of material. This is AMP 1. The first day, we would have gone over the entirety of Chapter 1, and it involves a lot of rote memorization. So every one of these lectures I give you, there's a lecture handout, and you'll see follow along 1, follow along 2. Sometimes the follow alongs are questions. Sometimes they're fill in the blanks. Sometimes they're just take notes. Sometimes they're uh, putting things in order or matching. Whatever it is, this handout correlates with the lecture. So you can just hit play on the lecture here and that handout is going to correlate with it. And we all know YouTube, you can actually go to YouTube itself if you want to, if you want the bigger screen. Um, so that's how lectures are done. Now, if we look at the course schedule, which is actually the most important document in the class, all the same information and a link to the class website. If you want all the material in the class with the exception of the uh, quizzes and exams, you can go here and you can look at the entirety of the content for the class. So we have syllabus, schedule, lecture areas, lab content areas, and you can navigate across the top and you can see everything that we're doing this entire semester. I break it into units and there are five units that we're going to be going over and each one, right, I think is a smaller manageable chunk with respect to testing. So we have the introduction video, which I'm making right now that's going to be posted right here. I would recommend pinning the class website to your phone so it opens almost like an app so you don't have to you know sign into Blackboard every time you just want to study a lecture or get a lecture handout because all of that's going to be on the video. Everything is or on the class website. Everything is going to be on the class website with the exception 
of formal exams and formal quizzes. All the exams and quizzes are only going to be able to be accessed through Blackboard because I only want my students being able to see those and it's linked. I can't link this website to the gradebook. So um, all the same material is there but on Blackboard you find the lecture uh, and lab quizzes and the exams. So class website. I would highly recommend using it. Now, when you look here, here's our schedule. Even though we're not formally attending class Monday and Thursday, I've just given this to you as a framework to think about the timeline of completion for the material. So if you look at Monday, it says chapter, chapter one lecture block, introduction to anatomy and physiology and homeostasis, four part lecture series. That should be done by the end of the week. Right. So when we join the study session on Thursday, I'm going to talk about course mechanics this first Thursday from 4 to 5.55 p.m. and what the expectations are. But this first week, there are one, two, three quizzes due. All of the formally graded material, not the extra credit material, but the formally graded material is going to be due on Sunday at 11.59 p.m. If you look at these blue highlighted bars, they give you the weekly wrap-up. So here's the week one wrap-up, three quizzes due. Here's the week two wrap-up, right? Two quizzes due. Something I want to highlight is that even if a lecture doesn't have an associated quiz with it because I didn't want to write 32 quizzes, doesn't mean that it's not going to be on the exam. All the lecture and lab content, whether it has a quiz associated with it or not, is going to be equally represented on the exam. So when you do these videos, you fill out the handouts. I would recommend having a three ring binder with 16 uh, dividers and dividing out things by content. So I've given you suggested, for example, introductory material, chemistry, cells, tissues, right? I've given you a suggested way to divide those up because it's going to be easier on you, right? It's going to allow you to organize this material in your head rather than having papers all over the place. And having this material organized and studying each day is going to be an important component to being successful in the class. So when you look at the Unit 1 material and you look at the Unit 1 lecture material, you have Chapter 1 lecture block. Every one of those lectures is going to be associated with a handout, and then there's a quiz over the lecture block. You just access the quiz and take it. You do it before its due date indicated in the schedule. That's why the schedule is so important. If you ask me what day is this happening, I'm just going to reference back to the schedule because I have four classes. Now, labs are going to be pretty similar. So if we go to the metric system and dimensional analysis lab, there's YouTube videos and then there are what are called Camtasia or screencast videos. This is lab one, Nature of Science lecture two on Camtasia. This is your first lab. If you go, it's going to direct you to a website called Screencast and you're going to download this video and then you're going to watch the video and follow along with the associated handout. So some labs are going to be just essentially lectures that are covering lab content. But if we go back to Unit 1 lab material, other labs are just going to be lists of things that we need to know. So when you think about anatomy lab review created by your instructor, there's a lot of overlap between lecture and lab. So here we're not doing any of these activities, but part A, major organs of the human body, right? And it gives you, here are your organ systems and it talks about what they do. Identify the following structures on lab models. Well, this is where you start referencing back to the lab videos that I've provided you. So when you think about uh, many of these labs that are just lists of things you need to know, right? There are a couple of different places to see that. One, you can just add a YouTube torso video lab model and you'll see it. Two, you can come here to important links in the book. Uh, where, do, where did I put that? No. Well, well, we'll focus on this one first. Oop, study guides. So study guide for lecture exam one. Any of the lab material that's just a list of things you need to know, I've provided a lab review. 
And that lab review covers cellular organelles, all the things we have to know, the parts of the microscope, and then if I say ignore, we're not doing histology or integument. So all of the pure anatomy labs or things in which you just, or labs in which you just have to um, know, uh, you, you know, be familiar with structures on models. Okay, guys, welcome I've to... I've given like this, so... Rear in the body, remember Andy. When I'm asking you about, for example, thing. body cavities, so if I said, identify we're talking the... about the torso model, this is what I'm talking about. And all those lab concepts are fair game. What we'd be doing in the class is ripping these torso models apart the first day and identifying all the organs and then getting into things like body cavities, etc. So what this lab video does is it walks you through the anatomy Again, paying attention to the schedule is important. So on the first exam, right, we have chapters one through three. I say in these practical reviews that I'm doing because I say ignore integument for exam one. I tell you what to not pay attention to. So this is eventually going to read ignore integument and histology for exam one. So you just do the first three labs and then those second labs and you'll see that there's overlap between those lab videos come later. But it gives you an idea of what to expect for this first lab. I've given you a practice lab uh, practical. I'm also going to talk about this extensively in our study sessions. So some labs are like that. Some labs are follow-along labs. So, for example, pH. What I would do with pH is I would open up the lab. Whoop. Here's my pH lab. So we have the lab quiz, and I'd go, okay, this is the material I would be using, and what would we actually be doing? So pretend like I'm your lab partner, and we're just collecting data points. And, uh that's what I'm doing right here. So you watch the video, you go, oh, okay, there's safety protocols, etc. involved. And the questions on the lab quiz are going to come directly from the lab. These are kind of more formal labs where we collect the data. And then we have a formal kind of lab write-up. And these questions form the basis of what are going to be on the lab quiz and the lecture exam, or the exam, the unit exam over this material. So those are labs. Um, then you have the unit exams tab. The unit exams will always be open for 72 hours. They're always going to consist of two parts, which we'll talk about in just a little bit. Study guides are up and ready to go. So you have your lecture exam or the lecture portion study guide and the lab portion study guides, which for the anatomy labs, when you just have a list of structures you need to know are going to be important. You have the study sessions, which are going to happen each Thursday. If you can't make it, you won't get the extra credit, but I will grade or uh, record that grade for you. And then you have the paper assignment, which is up and ready to go, which you're going to see in just a bit is going to be worth 150 points. Don't worry about trying to start writing that paper right off the bat. Again, pay attention to the schedule. That paper isn't due until the end of the semester. And I really put you through the ringer because I think it's so important that students have a basis in writing papers that I don't accept BS. We stage through it. We write an outline, we write a rough draft, and then we write a final copy. That's going to be a staged process because if you just submit, write a garbage rough draft paper, I will give you one out of 100 points. I have been known to do that on many occasions. Don't do that. Walk through this with me so you understand my expectations as an instructor. So don't worry about the paper right off the bat. Again, the schedule is your most important document because it walks you through where everything is and what the due dates are, etc. We always have these weekly wrap-ups, which will tell you about exams, etc. So pay attention to that. Now... When we come back here, we're going to continue going through the um, syllabus, and I'm going to highlight one thing at the end of the video here. So we've talked about a lot of this. Blackboard is our learning management site. Definitely look at this. Like, look at the course description and then think about, am I disciplined enough to stick to this? Because you have to dedicate at least 20 hours per week to this class. That is the bare minimum 
to get through. Most students dedicate 35 to 40. It is a really rigorous class. So see whether you meet those expectations or feel like you can meet those expectations because we move quickly and I have a high grading standard. It's one of the things we're going to talk about in the study sessions each week. Skills prerequisites, you can read through that. Common course objectives, you can read through that. Um, uh, course rationale, you can read through that. Required materials, we have the OpenStax textbook. I would recommend buying a three ring binder with 16 dividers. And we have modules in addition to the textbook to reinforce the material we're learning. Some of those modules are going to be associated with extra credit quizzes. Extra credit quizzes are only going to be found in the unit one modules. Extra credit quizzes only in the unit one modules. Extra credit quizzes only in the unit one modules. So when I say modules, these are not required. The lectures in the labs are required. Modules are not required, but they are a good way to reinforce the material that you've learned. So if you go to the unit one material here and you, let's say, take a, uh, the lecture block on chemistry, lecture one, lecture two, lecture quiz, general chemistry, supplementary modules for completion. Now, these modules go over the same material, but they do it in a different way. Some people prefer a different teaching methodology, or they like having an interactive little module to do it on. So you have modules, notes. What you'd do is you'd download these notes, and then you'd open up this module. It's going to direct me to another link right here. And these modules are essentially slow walkthrough lectures, right? So you go, what is matter? What are elements? What are atoms? What are molecules? And associated with these modules are going to be quizzes. So you go through the modules, the notes, and then the quiz is going to go over everything that the module discusses. Now, I discuss everything in the modules as well, for the most part. Sometimes I go well beyond what's in the modules. But this is a way, especially if you don't have a background, to slow down and kind of think about the material. All of these extra credit quizzes, uh, I can't answer you right now. I can't. Ay, All of these extra credit quizzes are going to be due Thursday, September 17th by 11.59 p.m. So all extra credit quizzes, Thursday, September 17th by 11.59 p.m. They're only associated with Unit 1, and they're only associated with the supplementary modules. Not every module will have an extra credit quiz associated with it, so it's your job to kind of dig through, right? But if you see modules and you go, hmm, I wonder if there's an extra credit module and quiz, here's your module, here's your quiz. Those are extra credit. They're completely optional, but they are up and available to you. All of those, every single one of them right are not staged by week you can use them as kind of a review before the exam thursday september 17th at 11:59 p.m. so if we continue going through this read through these sections and i'm just going to highlight things that are important all exams not quizzes not lecture and lab quizzes but unit exams over the lecture and lab material you have five exams worth 120 points a pop for a total of 600 points. All exams, you're going to have to use the Respondus Lockdown Browser in order to take it. Make sure you read through this. So we have a practice exam before the real exam where we can iron out any kinks you may have. But in order to do this, Respondus is a browser. So you need to click on that link watch the video explaining what Respondus is, and then download the browser. Just like Google Chrome's a browser, just like Firefox is a browser, Respondus is a browser. When you take the exams, you're going to have to shut down all of the other open windows, whether they be internet windows, Word documents, whatever it is. All of those open windows before you take the exam on your computer, and you're going to have to access that exam with the Respondus Lockdown Browser. The exams will be timed. Each exam will consist of two parts, a multiple choice and a short answer section. When you think about the Respondus Lockdown Browser, it's going to need to access your camera. And if you get a message that says, you need a password, I know you're not using the Respondus Lockdown Browser. 
you're using something like Firefox or Chrome or Internet Explorer, you haven't downloaded the browser yet. So troubleshoot it before we get, get through it because you're going to have to use the Respondus lockdown browser and the Respondus system for every exam. It is going to access your camera. If you don't have a computer with a camera, you're going to have to get one before the first exam or you're going to have to figure out how to check one out from the school. If that's something you need, I can uh, try and help you out with that. So we've talked about the lecture videos, the lab videos, the lectora modules, the readings. Again, this is where the schedule comes in. You have OpenStax Chapter 6, right? It's telling you what chapters to read that contain that content, especially if you're a bit better with the reading. So going back to the syllabus here. Exam, 600 points. Walks you through the exam format. Lab exercises and quizzes, 100 points. Some labs are pure anatomy, like dissection. Some labs are follow-alongs, like the pH and the diffusion and osmosis lab. Pay attention to the videos that are up and ready. Make sure to download your lab. And I recommend, again, organizing it based on that um, those content dividers that I've suggested in the three-ring binder. Lecture quizzes, 150 points. There's going to be 15 at 10 points apiece. Even if a lecture doesn't have an associated quiz, it doesn't mean it's not going to be on the exam. All material is going to be covered equally on the exam. So let me show you exactly what I mean by that. You go to lecture one, unit material. Now, some lecture quizzes are associated with blocks. Some lecture quizzes are associated with specific lectures, and you'll see them embedded within the content tab for that lecture. So you have introduction to biochemistry. Here's your lecture handout that walks you through. There's your lecture quiz associated with it. I give it to you in order of what you should do. Watch the video and fill out the handout while you're watching it, and then take the quiz, because if you're taking the quiz before you're trying to do the videos, you're going to have problems right so you have your lecture quiz you just click on it answer the questions hit submit you have the due dates for all those quizzes which are always going to be sunday at midnight for anything that's formally graded right and you can see that on the schedule so you you have that material now those lecture quizzes again are going to be worth 10 points a pop um they're going to be a reflection of what you would expect to see on the exam. But let's say you have a lecture over the cell, and that particular lecture isn't associated with a lecture quiz. So there's no lecture quiz associated with this lecture here, right? This lecture is still going to be equally weighted on the exam. I just haven't created a quiz associated with every single lecture. So your job is to do all of the material associated with each unit prior to taking the exam. If you don't, you're going to find you're going to get clobbered, particularly on short answer questions where it becomes painfully obvious who knows what they're talking about and who doesn't. So just keep that in mind. This class involves study time online even more so because you have to pace yourself. I don't I see once a week and that's good for 2 hours, but study before you come to study session. Set up a study schedule for what you're going to do. So that's important to mention that all of those are going to be equally weighted. So when you look through it, you have your schedule here and that's good. Paper submission. There will be a series of papers to choose from. This process will involve writing an outline, a rough draft, and a final submission. If I say write an outline and you give me some crappy rough draft because you're just trying to get this out of the way, zero. If you give me another of the exact same, zero, final submission, zero. I do not accept BS for papers. I want to make sure that you have a thorough understanding of the expectations of writing a science paper for a university level course. So you can look at the grade breakdown here, course policies on attendance, etc. I leave it up to you to drop, right? I don't usually withdraw students from the class unless they just haven't done anything in the first three weeks, then I'll do it, but it's up to you. Incompletes, read the um, uh, requirements, scholastic dishonesty, academic freedom, students with disabilities. If you're an SAS student, let me know and I'll try and accommodate you in any way I can. And that's the end of the syllabus. That's really the end of everything that I have to mention here. Everything is up, including the paper assignment, but hold off on trying to just get the paper assignment done as quickly as possible because you're going to find that I'll give you a five points if it's not written to the expectations that are established in the class. It's not due until the end of the semester, 
right? So really think about what you want to write it on, writing your outline, etc. because we're staging this in order to make sure that I know you know the expectations of a university level class, especially for those of you who are transferring to other institutions. With that said, thank you very much.